Okay, good morning. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting here. And uh, my name is Eddie Lam, uh, Associate Dean for Student Affairs of the Faculty of Science, the University of Hong Kong. And it is my honor to have the opportunity to speak here today at the uh, induction program for freshmen in uh, BSc, BSc Actuarial Science and BASc Applied Artificial Intelligence. And uh, congratulations on your superb achievement to make it to Hong Kong U. And uh, a big welcome to the family of Faculty of Science. Now, this is the rundown of today's induction program. And first of all, uh, uh, the pro uh, Professor Matthew Evans, the Dean of Science, will give you a welcoming speech. And then I'll give you a, an induction seminar, and then we have some experience to be shared by three science fresh graduates. And uh, I would like to go back to the first slide that uh, the theme of today's induction day is live up your dreams, even though we only have very little time to talk about your dreams. But uh, remember, this is kind of the theme of today's induction day. So maybe we can start with uh, the welcoming speech by Professor Matthew Evans, our Dean of Science. Thank you. A very big welcome to the Faculty of Science. I am Matthew Evans the Dean of the faculty, your faculty. I very much hope that you'll have an enjoyable time here for the four years or so that you will be with us. The university that you've chosen to join is an old established institution with a great reputation, as is our faculty. We were founded in 1939, just before the outbreak of the Second World War and the occupation of Hong Kong by the Japanese from late 1941 to mid 1945. And as, so as you can see, our faculty was founded in a time of strife and difficulty. And in that time, there have been 18 deans of science, more than 20,000 students. Our first graduate was Sing Sung Huang in 1941. And there were wartime degrees given to two other students, Yong Tai Lam and Ray Sun Huang. It's worth noting that of our first three graduates, two were men and one was a woman. Since this rather slow start, we've graduated over 23,000 students from more than 50 countries. So the family that you join today is both deep and wide. Almost anywhere you go, you will find someone with connections to this faculty is already there. This is important because your university is something that will stay with you forever. You probably know that the university at which you studied is usually referred to as your alma mater. But maybe you don't know what that means. It's a Latin phrase. It literally translates as nourishing mother. And an alumnus, if you're a man, or an alumna, if you're female, is one who was nourished. Now, I don't know how well you get on with your mother. I'm sure it's excellently. But you would be very unusual if you agreed with everything she ever said or did. So don't expect to agree with everything that your university says or does, or in fact, the other way around. As in a civilized society, we should be prepared to embrace diversity of thought. But just like your mother, we will always be here for you. And we would like you to make us proud. And I'm certain that you will do that. The last year was obviously a tumultuous one in Hong Kong. Some of you may have supported or even participated in the protests. Others of you will abhor the views that they expressed. Some of you might resent the national security law. Others might support it. It is not for me to tell you which opinion to hold. That is between you and your conscience. I will not judge. I will not condemn either side. But I will say one thing. A university is a place for ideas, for debate and discussion. It is not a place for violence. 
That is not to say that a university is a place of peace and harmony, because it is not. Academics disagree all the time. They argue all the time. But there's an academic way of settling things. Academics settle their differences through debate and argument. In fact, a good shorthand description of an academic's day-to-day -day life would be that it was full of argument. While we are in the university, I would hope that we can settle our differences in this academic way. Here in this place, you are not yellow or blue. You are green. You are all the hon colour of Hong Kong U. Reasoned argument should be acceptable. There should be no hate speech, though, and no violence. The university will respect your opinions and your actions provided that your conduct remains lawful. If you then add the outbreak of COVID-19 to the social issues, you will easily see that the last year has been exceptional. The mere fact that I'm speaking to you now by video rather than face to face testifies to the changes we have observed. And I'm very proud of the way the faculty has come through the last year. It has emerged stronger than it was before. My colleagues have learned how to teach online. There have been innovations that have been used to ensure the experience of students is as impacted as little as possible. I cannot pretend that it has been perfect. But given the scale of the challenges, it has been highly commendable. My colleagues, your teachers, have worked exceptionally hard to preserve the learning of our students. To be honest, we do not know exactly how the next semester will go. We have decided to teach the first three weeks online. The remainder of the semester we are planning to be in dual mode. That means both face-to-face -face and online. There will be some of you who cannot make it to the university at all, and we will do our best to ensure that you have the best online experience possible. But there are some forms of teaching that are difficult or even impossible sometimes to actually put online. Field or practical teaching, for example. If you can make it to classes when face-to-face -face teaching is possible, then please do your best to do so. We will keep you informed, so please check your university email accounts regularly for updates. Science is an amazing adventure. I hope that is a statement on which we can all agree. After all, everyone watching this is a scientist. Whatever our field of study, we aim to push the boundaries of what is known in an effort to better explain the world. We may be interested in the far reaches of space and understanding how the universe formed or in understanding how the amazing biological diversity found on this planet was produced by evolution, or perhaps by uncovering new drugs that might help to fight the diseases of mankind. All of these and much more are scientific endeavors. And in all scientific disciplines, we are interested in developing new knowledge, in debunking erroneous ideas, and producing a better understanding of the way in which part of the world works. As Edwin Hubble said over 50 years ago, equipped with his five senses, man explores the universe around him and calls the adventure science. So undertake your own adventure while you are here, and do not be afraid to make mistakes. We all do. You need to take risks. If you are not making mistakes, you are not taking enough risks. Safe science gets us nowhere. In a very real way, all scientists know that everything we know today is actually wrong. That means that if what we are aiming at is a complete and total understanding of phenomena, then we currently aren't there. There is every chance, and I really hope that this is the case, that someone watching this will discover something that proves some widely held fact is in fact an error. But remember science, while it's built of facts, like a house is built of stones, but an accumulation of facts is no more science than a heap of stones is a house. The important part of science lies in the explanations provided for the facts, which are the observations and experiments that scientists make. 
These explanations are hypotheses, and they are always provisional and always open to being found incorrect. New facts, hypotheses, or theories can come from anywhere. They may be advanced by technology. For example, physicists have spent about $9 billion on the Large Hadron Collider, which has found evidence consistent with the existence of the Higgs boson. But so far, they've failed to find anything that challenges the standard model. Another example in the field of genetics, which has been transformed by the ability to sequence DNA following the success of the Human Genome Project, which cost about $5 billion. More importantly, scientific advances can come from anywhere. The two projects I just mentioned were international collaborations with funding and personnel being drawn from all over the world. Science is one of the most truly international activities. It does not and should not matter who conducted the science, what language she or he speaks at home, what currency his or her salary was paid in, and for that matter, with which gender that person identifies. I have personally collaborated with people from the UK, Ireland, United States, Canada, Germany, China, Japan, Argentina, Brazil, Jamaica, and I could go on. Of our staff in the faculty, about 40% come from outside Hong Kong and China. This is how it should be. In a world-leading university like Hong Kong U, we should be bringing the most talented individuals we can find to teach students and conduct research in the university. HKU is currently rated as the world's most international university. If you look around you when you're in a class, about 20% of the students won't be from Hong Kong and about half of those will not be from China. I hope that you will recognize that while you may come from different countries, you are all members of this HKU Faculty of Science family. You have far more in common than what divides you because you are all scientists. So welcome to the faculty. I hope that you'll be very happy here. Remember your time at HKU fondly in years to come. Uh, thank you, Professor Matthew Evans. As he mentioned in the video, he mentioned that academics disagrees all the time. So, and uh, there is one point I cannot totally agree with the Dean in the video. He mentioned that at university, don't be afraid to make mistakes. If you're not making enough mistakes, if you're not making mistakes, you're not taking enough risk. Okay, so I'm the bad guy here. To tell you a little bit about the study at Faculty of Science. And the first things I would like to discuss is something, some mistakes that can, you cannot make at university. Okay, the first thing is very important, which is probably new to a lot of freshmen, which is plagiarism and regulations of discontinuation. So what is plagiarism? Plagiarism refers to uh, using some other, some person's ideas and information without properly acknowledging that specific person as the source. And this is an act of fraud. And academic dysmenia is a serious disciplinary offense. The situation is particularly severe in course assessment involving submission of report, poster, presentation where students have been caught copying materials in bulk. The faculty does not tolerate plagiarism. Commitment of plagiarism could result in severe penalty and disciplinary action, including reprimand and discontinuation. And details for plagiarism can be found in the Faculty of Science homepage. 
like you might wonder in what situation I would be defined as having committed plagiarism. For example, copying text, work, graphics from internet, books, or any forms of information without proper paraphrasing or acknowledgement is a mean of violating academic honesty. And uh, one should not say that you don't know, okay? Because at the University of Hong Kong, we have a plagiarism checker called Turnitin. And very often when you submit your work, your assignment, your essay, your project, you will have to submit through the Turnitin, which is a plagiarism checker. And they will check the similarity of your, the of your work with those already exist in the literature. Okay, so you cannot say that, oh, I don't know, because you have the similarity of reports generated by the Turnitin. Okay, so when you have doubt, talk to your academic advisor, your teacher, or your tutor, okay? But just do not commit plagiarism accidentally, okay? So there are other disciplinary issues. It seems that I'm very bad telling you all the bad things about the university. <laughs> Okay, so disciplinary issues besides plagiarism, you should be aware of your conduct, behavior, and always uphold your integrity. Never attempt cheating, falsification of documents. Okay, very often, you know, students who uh, skip the test and they submitted a medical representation and they get it from the hall or wherever, okay? And which is a falsification of documents and that's a criminal act. And it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't worth to take the risk to submit a falsification of documents. A class test only worth 12, 10% of the total mark. So, so don't ever think about it. Now, any disciplinary infringements will be considered by the disciplinary committee Penalty ranges from reprimand to expulsion from the university, depending on the seriousness of the offense. Other things that you should, be pay, you should pay attention to would be the inclusive language in academic work. Now, inclusive language in academic work and more attention and awareness should be paid to and sensitive to the use of language is to generate more thoughtful and respectful use of language, to reduce discrimination by promoting a balanced and considerate engagement with social diversity, and to avoid words and phrases that stereotype, marginalize, and demean social groups, okay? For more information, you can take a look at the, the following website from the teaching and learning of the university. And the most serious part is the regulations on discontinuation. Okay, there are some important guidelines uh, for progression and discontinuation. The faculty stresses the importance of the academic performance of students. And for those students who do not perform satisfactorily, may be recommended for discontinuation of their studies. Now the following apply to all three programs, the BSc, the Bachelor of Science, the Bachelor of Science in Actuarial Science, as well as the BASc in Applied Artificial Intelligence. The rules will also apply, okay? The rules are fail to complete successfully for 36 or more credits in two consecutive semesters, not including the summer semester except where they are not required to take such a number of credits in the two given semesters, or fail to achieve an average semester GPA of 1.0, which is equivalent to a level D, okay, or higher for two consecutive semesters, not including the summer semesters, or exceeded the maximum period of registration specified in certain places in the student handbook, unless otherwise, permitted by the board of the faculty. And this maximum period is usually six years for all three programs, okay, six years. So make sure that you don't commit these mistakes, okay? Also, a student whose performance at examinations or in coursework or in such class tests 
as may be held from time to time is unsatisfactory, or in the case of a higher degree student whose progress is unsatisfactory, may be required by the Senate to discontinue his studies. And for those students who are recommended for discontinuation of their studies, will be interviewed by the Faculty Review Committee on Student Performance and Discontinuation before their cases are considered by the University Committee on, on Discontinuation, we call it COD. And the FRC normally meets in January, February, and July every year, okay? So I don't really want to see you in the FRC, so please, you know, perform uh, satisfactory in your uh, uh, academic performance. Okay, and other than the bad things, we also have some many, many good things at the faculty. Other than the rules and regulations, we have other le uh, learning opportunities provided by the faculty. Okay, and they are called the experiential learning and outside classroom learning ex experience. Okay. And uh, exper experiential learning activities to complement and enhance the curriculum so as to give students an all-rounded and holistic education and to require students to tackle real-life issues and problems by drawing on theoretical knowledge that they have learned in formal curriculum and to address the limitations in lecture, classroom-based learning. We have a list of experiential learning activities available through the project-based learning, including the undergraduate research opportunities, uh, the final year project provided by the, each department, if you major uh, of your, your uh, uh, department, that the subject that you're majoring in with the final year project, director studies, and we also have a summer research fellowship scheme, the overseas research fellowship scheme, the undergraduate research fellowship program and the undergraduate research colloquium for science students. We also have seminar course as well as the capstone experience. We also have some field studies, discipline internship and professional preparation program a student exchange program, visiting studies, summer schools offered by the IAO office, the International Affairs Office, or by the faculty, by school, as well as by departments. Also, it is the recommendation of the university of the one mainland China, one overseas learning opportunities. Okay, so this opportunity is to promote global citizenship and competitiveness. Students are strongly encouraged to participate in at least one mainland China and one overseas learning opportunity with duration of no, more than, uh, no less than three weeks, of which at least two weeks must be outside Hong Kong in their undergraduate studies. Okay, so stay tuned for the opportunities available from the faculty, from the CEDAS, from Common Core Office, IO, IAO, Hong Kong U Horizons, AAO, Hong Kong U Summer Institute, and so on, okay? So there are lots of opportunities. And uh, you can find the resources, the useful resources from our one-stop induction platform for freshers in the science program, okay? Where you can find a lot of useful information, all you need to know, as well as the uh, major and minor program, as well as, uh, you know, all the information you need. You also, you can also find your undergraduate student handbook from the faculty web page, and as well as the tips for choosing your major and minor program. Of course, it's better to talk to people and to have, if you have any queries, it may be very specific to you, and these are the useful contact with the faculty office, the academic advising office, academic support and examination sections, as well as the Hong Kong U Worldwide Undergraduate Exchange Program. And we, you, have, you can find the contact on this slide. Also, we have the advice and support from the university 
and we have the academic advising office that provide academic advice to all undergraduate students. We have the Center of Development and Resources for Students. And in short, we call it CEDAS, okay? CEDAS, provide counseling and personal, uh, counseling service and person enrichment, careers and placement, campus life and student development uh, uh, problems. You can go to see this directly. And of course, we have the university health service at the University of Hong Kong, and which will take care of your health issues. And that's all about the regulations, rules and support from the university. And now it's time to have a, some chit chat with you. And, you know, some time ago, I asked my daughter a question. Why go to university? And to my surprise, she gave me a dirty look like this. What do you mean? Why go to university? I just finished my secondary education. Do you expect me to go back to primary school or what? You know, I said, that, that's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. I mean, my question is, what is the purpose of going to university? And so I would like to know how you feel about this question. And here I, I have a question on what is the most important reason for going to university? Maybe I would like to have your response. Thank you. By a polling. Okay, so you have five choices. They are academic interest, university education often needs to a better career in the future, enjoy an active social life by making more friends, fulfill parents' dreams and others. Okay, what is the most important reason for going to university? That sounds interesting. Maybe I give you 15 more seconds. Thank you. That's very interesting, almost 50%. You know, I'm a statistician. I forgot to introduce, I am from the Department of Statistics and Actuarial Science, and I'm actually a statistician. Now, about 50% of the respondents, how many people responded? Uh, uh, about 400 students, uh, uh, 400 respondents. Out of the, the almost 400 respondents, 200 replied that, University education often needs to a better career in the future. And then about 40% is for academic interests. You know, I'm, I'm not surprised that about half of the respondents have chosen B, that university education often needs to a better career. Mainly because, you know, Hong Kong is more uh, quite material, okay? So money is very important in Hong Kong. But uh, maybe I can uh, ask another question. You know, this is inspired by another induction program. You know, I, I just knew that, you know, something called five things of university. Five things of university. So what, what, what are the five things at university? And here we have A, study. B, become an ex school member. C, experience whole life, and D, get out of the pool by finding a boy or girlfriend, and E, find part-time jobs. Okay, now I add another one here is fight for your dreams. Okay, fight for your dreams. Okay, so I would like to have your response as well on this question. What do you want to do most at university? Can I have your response, please? Five things of university.
Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I'm a bit surprised that, you know, about 50% of the respondents chose option F, fighting for your dreams. You know, I, I would expect that, you know, the number would be quite small. And uh, find part-time jobs, only 1%. And 2% uh, become an ex-co member. Oh, I, I think the current ex-co members you know, you would have a hard time in finding the next cabinet, the members for the next cabinet. Only eight, eight respondents. Uh, you, you know, you have to fight among the science society, <laughs> the stat society, chemistry society, among these eight, okay? And 150, 150 say that, you know, for study, okay? So if you, if you remember, I, I'm, this is not the main theme of today's induction program, is to live up your dreams at, at Hong Kong U. And I would like to say a little bit about, about dreams, okay? To live up your dreams at Hong Kong U. You know, I like to use some famous quotes by some celebrity. And uh, here I'm going to make use of three quotes about dreams. Okay, the first one is, there is no difference between a man without dream and a salted fish, okay, and a salted fish, which is a dead fish, okay? And this is from a dialogue of Stephen Chow, a very famous comedian, actor in Hong Kong. And it's a dialogue of Stephen Chow in his movie, Shaolin, Shaolin Soccer, okay? That's the first one. There is no difference between a man without dream and a salted fish. And the second one is, if you don't dream, you might as well be dead. Okay, which is the two quotes are quite similar. This is by George Foreman. George Foreman is an American professional boxer and uh, Olympic gold medalist in 1968. And he is a black uh, 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 boxer. Okay, which is quite difficult for black men to become famous in the United States in the old days. And the last one is, you have to dream before your dreams come true by Abdul Kalam, which is an Indian aerospace scientist and the president of India between 2002 and 2007. Okay, so I, I would like to choose this as, you know, to, to tell you a little bit about dreams, to, just to share with you. And mainly because in, in the first polling, you know, about 50% of the, the respondents, 50% uh, of the respondents, they said, you know, university education will need them to a better career in the future. Okay. So now several years back, I, I bumped into two students. I bumped into two graduates, actually. And... They tap on my shoulder and I turn my back and I saw two, I don't know how to explain, that two unfamiliar faces. They said, hi, Eddie. And I look at them, I don't quite remember them and they were very dark with rough skins and uh, just like my age, I thought they, they were my schoolmates. And they were actually my students graduated like for two years at that time at most, okay? So I said, you are, and they remind me about their names and so on. I said, so, oh, that's great to see you again. I don't remember you. What happened to you? You get all dark and rough skins and, you know, you, your aging process is progressing very fast. So they said, oh, uh, uh, we work as organic farmers after graduation for two years. I said, organic farmers, that's a new industry. He said, yes. And uh, so you must be making a lot of money. <clears throat> and they said, no, because I'm also a material guide. So uh, all, everything I, I, I think of is money, okay? So you must be making a lot of money. They said, no, I, we only make about 
10,000 per month, 10,000 Hong Kong dollars a month. That is about 13, uh, 1,300 US dollars per month, which is way below the median income in Hong Kong, okay? And said, why would you like to become an organic farmer? And uh, how do you get all the dark and rough skins? They said, we go to bed at eight o'clock at night and get up at three to four o'clock in the morning and start working in the field under the sun and so on. I said, do you think it worth it? They said, this is our dreams and we are very happy to have our dream come true. And uh, the only thing I can see is their big happy face. You know, they have a big smiling face hanging on the, the, the face a big smile that, you know, that's quite rare in Hong Kong. And I can feel their happiness. And they also said, we're not too sure whether our dream is sustainable, but we are still young. Uh, we will not regret what we have done. Okay, so that, you know, I have a sincere admiration of their act and I'm very happy that they, they fight very hard and chase after their dreams. Who knows whether your dream, your dream can be sustainable, but at least you have tried, okay? So that's something I, I would like to share with you about your dream. So you need to have a dream, and at least you need to have a plan to think of, you know, about the future. At least what do you want to achieve in four years' time? When you graduate from this university, what do you want to achieve, okay? So there are other skills that universities would enable you to develop, okay? Like organization other than academic, there are many, many soft skills that, or transferable skills that you need to pick up from university. They are the organization ability to cope under uh, pressure, research and evaluation, analytical skills, communication skills, adapting to new environments, teamwork, conflict solution, resolution, problem solving, dedication, enriching your network and make lifelong connections, developing employment skills and so on, okay? So for your dreams, you know, if you have a dream, then you can prioritize what kind of skills you need to equip from the university, okay? So um, just wishing you a very happy and fruitful university life and uh, enjoy your university life. And Next, I would like to invite some, uh, we have some students share sharing and let's see how they chase after the dream. And the first uh, graduate I would like to invite is Miss Anna Shea. I haven't seen her for quite some time. Uh, shall I make it? Uh, Anna is a, a fresh graduate uh, from Uh, majoring in molecular biology and biotechnology and minor in English studies. And she participated in the summer research fellowship. That is something that I mentioned earlier about the experiential learning. We call it SRF under the supervision of Dr. Wallace Lim in 2017, in the summer of 2017. And she joined a year long overseas exchange program to National University of Singapore and she will further pursue her PhD study in plant science at the University of Cambridge in about a month time, okay? So can I invite Anna to share your wonderful experience with us? Um, thank you so much for the kind introduction, um, Dr. Lin. Um, let me just, uh, Dr. Lin, just a minute. Let me share my PowerPoint with all of you. Okay. And please pardon my forehead. I, for, for some reasons, my um, um, pleasure background isn't really working. Okay, I suppose everyone can see it right now. Um, so again, thank you so much, Dr. Edilem, for the kind introduction. And I'm really glad to be able to share my experience with all of you this morning. And a really warm welcome to HKU. Um, as um, Edilem has introduced, uh, I have just graduated from HKU um, with uh, a BSc degree in molecular biology and biotechnology. And today, I'll be mainly talking to you about my experience um, 
in the SRF program, now this is exchange at the National University of Singapore. And to myself, more, more importantly, like how I bridge on to other opportunities um, after um, the experience that HGA has provided me, um, you know, as, you know, uh, for the YSS students. And uh, finally, I hope that I can give you a, a few tips, which uh, hopefully will help you to um, do whatever you want to do uh, in uh, uni, especially if you want to pursue research like me. So uh, for the Summer Research Fellowship, um, I actually started in university knowing that I like plant sciences. So I applied um, to do a um, project on chloroplast uh, with Dr. Wallace Lim uh, in the summer of 2017, which lasted three months. Um, it's totally fine that you don't understand what my uh, research topic is about. I didn't have any idea back then. Um, the point here is um, after you uh, complete your first year of studies, once you have some background knowledge in your courses and your lab um, practicals, you need some experience in um, as in what, how it feels like actually working in the lab. Believe in me, whatever you learn in classes and practicals will at first appear useless in the lab because it's a completely different context. You have a completely different way of organizing a schedule and how to do things. But trust me, that, is, that will be an eye-opening experience for you and will be a really useful way to um, test whether you are passionate about research or not. Fortunate for me, this experience really affirmed my interest in plant sciences and research. And uh, fast forward to my third year, um, I went on to my uh, first overseas exchange uh, at the National University of Singapore, which is a really nice school. And uh, while I was there, I joined the Undergraduate Research Opportunity Program, also called Europe. Um, this is really uh, common in foreign universities to provide this kind of um, programs for undergraduate students to experience what research lives feel like. Oh, sorry. Um, it's akin to the SRF. Um, the only difference being Europe usually runs in the semester, while SRF is only for the summer. So my project was uh, an eight month long project on protein interaction and rice, like, like exactly the rice that you eat every day. Um, the picture shows me and some of my group mates in a um, group project back in uh, NUS. And one note here, you will want to find some really, really good group mates while you're at HKU or when you're on exchange, because a lot of the courses will involve group project. And even after you graduate, like now after I did it, um, when you go into um, workplace or you know into the academia, you always be working with people. So. Um, do remember to build a good relationship with your group mates and future collaborators and, you know, proceed as you should. And uh, one thing I would like to highlight after talking about my HKU sort of exchange and SRF experience will be how I bridge all the other opportunities uh, in my final year. So after I uh, completed uh, my NUS research, I uh, was fortunate enough to win the Innovation and Technology Scholarship offered by um, HA. SAR government, HSBC, and HKFYG, which gave me quite some money um, on overseas exchange in a year. I love to diverge. Eddie just mentioned that, um, you know, how people are being materialistic or something. I often consider like you can be materialistic and idealistic at the same time because as scientists, we do have dreams about whatever we want to do, whatever research we want to make. But frankly speaking, we live in the material world and you do need money to, you know, let's say, fly to foreign places for exchange, you didn't need money to pay for a dormitory and whatever not. So like be materialistic and idealistic as you should. So under the support of that scholarship, I went to um, Cambridge uh, during the summer of 2019. Um, the picture below is me with my uh, Cambridge supervisor and my lab mates. And I also went to the University of Western Australia uh, last winter. Uh, here's a picture uh, of me and my Australian lab mates. Both of um, these lab experiences are focused on to plants in fact biology, which is um, what I will specialize in as a PhD student. So I really want to highlight um, when you are at HKU, um, don't just be limited by what the faculty or the school has to offer. You can start to, you know, to learn more about outside opportunities and start to build your career step by step. This brings me to the tips I want to share with you about, um, especially if you want to um, pursue a research career. Uh, first of all, when you enter university, read widely and determine, even if really fake your, your interests early. This will help you to discover the right opportunities for you. 
as I mentioned, it was because that I knew I was vaguely interested in plant biology that I chose the SLF project, which basically paved the way for everything that happens after. And as I mentioned when I was talking about my SLF, you must be ready to learn on the job. A lot of things that your courses and your lab practicals teaches you wouldn't really exactly prepare you for um, even your first lab internship. So be open-minded and be ready to learn the job. It's okay to fail. It's okay to not know anything, but it's not okay to stop learning. And this one may be a bit more administrative sort of thing, but do check your email because a lot of scholarship and foreign exchange opportunities will be announced via mass emails. And trust me, you'll receive tons of it. I believe most of you are receiving tons of it right now, but do you spend like five, 10 minutes every day to filter your emails. You wouldn't be disappointed. And uh, my final tip would be ask about anything and everything. Like, you see, the worst thing that could happen is that people will say no to you, which doesn't really hurt because, um, well, it's just a no, right? But if they say something yes or no, but you're going to get some useful information that you might not get otherwise. Um, I hope my sharing has been helpful and uh, best of luck to you all of you and wish you uh, a fruitful four years uh, at HKU. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I remember that Anna asked a lot of questions when she was doing her undergraduate studies, but very often she did not listen. <laughs> she just get your advice and then, you know, to think logically and to decide what is best for her. And I agree with you, with you that, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong to be materialistic because, you know, this is Hong Kong and nobody, you know, everybody wants to be rich and nobody wants to be poor for sure. But at, at university, there are so many things to do. And one thing that you must learn at university is time management. Okay. So you have to prioritize what is the must do list today. Okay. What is the must do list the top of the must-do list, and then you make use of your time management skills to find what is the best for you at university. So uh, maybe I can invite invite the next uh, uh, graduate, uh, Mr. George Wong. And George, I haven't seen him for quite some time as well. And he's a fresh graduate majoring in chemistry and uh, he's a student tutor of one of my course for one year. And uh, he participated in the summer research fellowship in the summer of uh, 2017 and 2018 and participated in the university research fellowship program in 2019. And he's the first runner up in the UG undergraduate research colloquium in 2020. And he will further pursue his PhD study in chemistry at the University of California, Los Angeles of the United States in the coming September. And George is majoring in chemistry, but he's a peer tutor of my course teaching quantitative skills. And uh, you know, how did you do it, George? Can you share with us? All right, <laughs> yeah. Well, hi everyone. My name is um, George. So as like Anna, I'm also a, a recent graduate and from the University of Hong Kong, and I currently major in chemistry. So just a brief introduction. Um, during my four years in the University of Hong Kong, I was, you know, just like, just the same as you guys. When I was in year one, I was just looking out for the opportunities, whether it's academic or non-academic, and see like, you know, what kind of um, science really interested me. So I participated in many of these uh, research fellowship schemes, including the Summer Research Fellowship and the URFP, and also had questions whether, you know, what, 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 what was life like um, if I were to study abroad? So I also did some semester exchange. So firstly, I would like to share my experience um, during my Summer Research Fellowship. So um, back in year one, I was like kind of interested in um, inorganic chemistry, especially those that, you know, have um, really good application in the energy or environmental field. So I was looking out for some professors in the University of Hong Kong, and I was fortunate to be able to find um, undergraduate internship positions and get some lab experiences. So I think if you were to um, engage in these research opportunities, you can 
it's very important to ask good questions, you know, understand how the lab environment works, how the structure works, and how to, you know, organize your own project. So these are very important skills that you can't really get through listening in the lectures. And um, also you get to, you know, practice your interpersonal skills and talking to your, um, the other academics within the lab. And it's very easy to find these professors, really. You have to just email them and be proactive. And then you can also find, um, go on to the Faculty of Science website and ask for, you know, um, support in terms of like financial stipends and stuff. So for this particular scheme, I was also invited to do a poster presentation. So that is where we are presenting our work that we've done during the summer. And again, there was like, you can, during this presentation, you basically practice your oral skills and learn how to present in a more academic format. So um, apart from doing the summer um, research fellowship scheme, I also wanted to, as I said before, wanted to go outside, go abroad, you know, learn about the world um, because Hong Kong is just a very small place. So um, I would like to, first of all, point out that I was partaking in the HKU, Worldwide Undergraduate Student Exchange Program during my third year, hosted by the International Affairs Office. So um, a tip for you, if you want to, uh, I'm sure some of you would like to go to exchange and you know get some overseas education. So um, an important tip to get to the school that you want to would just um, you know, focus on your academic performance because according to the International Affairs Office, you need, they'll use your CGPA um, as, a, as a benchmark to decide what university that you can go. And so, yeah, you gotta like, you know, study hard if you really want to get to a good um, overseas school for exchange. Um, so I was lucky enough to get to um, University of California, Berkeley for my research. And um, during this time, I was also um, wondering whether there would be an opportunity to do research overseas as well. So I basically kind of contacted the Faculty of Sciences and asked for like, you know, the U asked for my enrollment into the URFP program. And luckily enough, they provided me a stipend for me to do um, um, research work for landfill complexes um, in, during summer in Berkeley. So um, a good lesson that I've learned is to really, um, so when you want to do something, you really need to ask yourself questions on how to achieve it. For example, when I was trying to do, when I was trying to plan out my um, overseas research, I had to ask myself, oh, how do, I, um, how do I find professors? How am I supposed to, you know, get in time, uh, get enough time so I can, you know, obtain this award, how am I supposed to do my visa application and so forth. So like regardless of what you do in university, always have a good plan. So um, apart from the research programs I've talked about, um, the, uh, the Department of Chemistry and I'm sure other departments as so will have like these experiential learning and exchange opportunities that are available on their website. So really do take the time to do your research and find out what um, opportunities there are. So, and specifically for the chemist, um, in, within the Department of Chemistry, I can tell you that they have really, um, really improved a lot in terms of your their experiential learning and exchange opportunities. When I was in year one, there weren't that many, but now they're really pushing it up and I'm, I'm glad they're doing this. So um, if you can participate in these programs and I'm sure it'll bring, um, it'll provide you more skills, more beneficial skills um, in the future. So in terms of my non-academics, um, while I was in around year one and year two, I, I, I didn't, well, I mean, I, I really studied hard so I could get a good exchange, but I also, you know, wanted to, you know, mingle around other university um, students, um, maybe from other disciplines, not necessarily science. So I basically participated in um, international society in my first year and also participated in the dorm life in the Lapshi College. And just like as Professor um, Eddie Lam said, I also you know, wanted to get some tutor experiences. So there are some experiences, maybe you could reach out to a professor if you want to tutor a class. So that's what I did. You know, I wanted to you know, just like you know, um, improve my teaching skills. So that's why I want to become a, uh, a tutor in the course SCNC 101. 
So um, as a reflection of my past four years, I really think that it's important for a student to be very proactive um, regarding the, not only their studies, but also, you know, their non-academic matters, just like, you know, how to, you know, really plan your university life overall and explore like these opportunities available um, in school. Um, and I think that it is um, very also important to know how to balance between your priorities, whether it's your academic and non-academics. Um, uh, as me as a personal story, when I was in um, year one and year two, although I did participate in non-academics such as these societies, in year three and year four, I realized that, you know, my future career, I wanted to do research. So I really had to put the hard work um, in my remaining years to get um, sufficient academic credentials to get into my, um, the desired university for my graduate study. So whether it's um, you're, you want to pursue an academic career or whether you want to find internship elsewhere, you really have to be proactive and constantly searching for these learning opportunities. So um, thank you very much for inviting me and I hope um, you guys will have a um, fruitful four years ahead. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, George. And uh, I just noticed that uh, Anna and George, they mentioned something very important as well and they have some common characteristics that they take the initiatives to explore opportunities by asking a lot of questions and see what they can do. But they were not just sitting there waiting for opportunities to come, okay? So at university, if you don't stand up, nobody will notice you, okay? So make sure that you, t you be proactive and you know, explore more to find out what's uh, best for you at university. So finally, I would like to invite Ms. Christina Chow, to share with us her experience at university. Uh, Christina, please. Hello. Let me, yeah, let me put up my PowerPoint. <clears throat> so hi everyone, uh, my name is Ching Ching, Christina. Um, so I'm a fresh graduate this year from HKU. I major in physics. So today it's really my honor to be here to share with you guys my HKU experience in the past four years. So in, in my sharing, there actually mainly be two sections. So in the first part, I will talk about some academic related experience. And then in the second part, I will share some non-academic activities that I have participated in. So, okay, so academic wise, in my four years ago, when I was year one, and when I just got into, into HKU, I was pretty sure that, you know, I'm very interested in physics and I want to do research in physics. That is quite naive, but it's also motivated me to take classes in physics. And by the end of year one, I applied for the summer research fellowship program. So this is a program that Anne and George has also mentioned. Essentially, um, faculty will fund you over the summer so that you can work in a research group in HKU. Um, I took this chance to join the nuclear physics group Starting from that summer, I get to learn about virus data analysis technique in the nuclear physics. Um, I keep staying in the group over throughout my year two, acting as a part-time undergrad researcher. And I also did my second summer research fellowship program there. So my research experience at nuclear physics group is not only um, staying in the lab in Hong Kong U and you know doing data analysis, I also got the chance to really go out and see how on real experiments I conducted in nuclear physics. So I got the opportunity to go to Lanzhou an Institute of Modern Physics to see how people there doing nuclear physics experiments. Um, so over the summer, and I, I participate in the in Nishina School for Nuclear Physics. So this is a, a summer school arranged between HKU, Peking U, Seoul University, and the Riken Research Institute in Japan. And I spent two weeks in Japan learning about nuclear knowledge from the best research scientists there. So after the first two years of doing research and taking classes uh, in my year three, and I applied for the visiting program. So I went, I spent a year at Yale as a visiting student. This is a visiting program arranged by HKU and Yale University. 
one year at Yale was absolutely amazing. Um, Academic-wise, when I just got into Yale, I didn't start doing research right away. Instead, I really sit down and start thinking, you know, what is my research interest? After 1.5 year experience at, at Nuclear Physics Group, I realized that doing research in fundamental science might not be my passion. And I started to talk with different PhD students there and professors there. And eventually I decided that I want to join an applied physics research group there. And I have a great ex research experience in that group. I got a chance to um, initiate my own project. I have weekly discussion with a professor and discuss about our um, project and the different approach that we, we might able to take to solve our, our problems. Um, so I love my research experience there so much that I actually stayed there for this during the summer uh, through the overseas research fellowship program from HKU acting as a full-time researcher and I also took a gap semester there at Yale working as a full-time researcher. So after one year research experience at Yale, um, it's really helped me develop my own research interest in that particular field that I realized um, I want, I'm willing to spend a um, future five years to learn more about it. And this led me to apply for the grad school program. And in the coming fall, I will be joining Stanford um, as a PhD student. So this is the academic related experience I have in the past four year, but college life is not only about research and taking classes. And I also participate in many uh, non-academic related um, activities. So in the winter holiday, I went to Korea and participate in a inter intercultural collaborative project uh, with students at H SKKU. And I joined the Oxford Global Leadership in Initiative Student Forum, discussing what is a good leader with people from Oxford. Um, I also joined a residential college in my um, year two. So in our hall, there's many different ac activities. One of the most memorable one is this 38 kilometer Rom Island Marathon. I'm super bad at running and that's actually um, that's very tough the whole marathon but looking back i'm looking back i'm glad that i um i made it to the end and it's a very um, memorable experience for me and during my stay at yale i also took this opportunity to you know visit states um, i made great friends there i visit my roommate's hometown which is in connecticut and i went to dc and paddling with other visiting students uh, one of the fun story is that um, I always have the dream of taking care of a cat and, and having my own cat. And this dream accidentally come true during my stay at Yale. So I was able to help my landlord to taking care of her cat over the summer. And it's, it's, it's just sweet to have the cat's accompany over the summer while I'm doing research. And that's all of my sharing and thanks for listening. Um, again, welcome to HKU. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for the sharing by the three graduates, and uh, uh, wishing you all the best in your studies, in your PhD studies. Okay, here we come, as time is running out, okay, and uh, as we have too many participants today, we have about, you know, four to five hundred participants today, and I'm sorry that it is impossible for us to have any interaction uh, even chatting on the internet and so on. But if you have any questions in planning your study ahead, okay, if you have any, any questions in, your in, in planning your studies, please feel free to let us know, okay? Go to your academic advisor, your student peer advisor, as mentioned by our uh, student speakers, our graduates mentioned many, many times ask questions, be proactive, okay? And make sure that where you're going to find out the direction. Now, if you have further questions, and the best thing to do is to find your academic advisor or your student peer advisor. And here you can find on the Moodle webpage. You can find on your Moodle webpage here and go to the student center, self-service student center, where you can find the 
advisor on the right hand side. Okay, the, the red circle, uh, oval on the right hand side is the advisor. You click on it, you can find your academic advisor and your uh, student advisor. Okay, and there you can find the contact of the two advisors if you have any questions about planning your study. And also, we, the, the Faculty of Science has organized the student peer advising live chat. Okay, we, yesterday and this week and next week's main theme is on course selection. And yesterday we talked about the food and nutritional science and starting today, we also have the molecular biology and biotechnology, mathematics, decision analytics, statistics, and so on, up to September the 3rd. And then also we have the research opportunities at Hong Kong Youth Science on September the 4th, Friday from three to four, okay? So make sure that you attend this talk to, the, to explore the research opportunities from the science faculty. And also we have the biochemistry, biological science, and so on. And exchange opportunities will be held on September the 11th. You know, every Friday we have some highlights, okay? So make sure that you come to our Friday's live chat, Friday. 11 to 12, okay? The SENC 1111 class ends at 10.30. So this is the right time, okay? So if you have any questions, please, you, you know, at least you visit our live chat and talk to our uh, uh, student uh, peer advisors, okay? And the last minute advice, September the 15th, okay, which is the, the last day of the airdrop period, and last minute advice, try not to be a, a deadline fighter. If you have any questions, go to seek help from your student advisor and your faculty advisor or your minor, major minor program advisor. And uh, I think it's the right time to stop. Now, how does the faculty contact you? And the faculty will contact you by email to your Hong Kong U email account. Now, students have the responsibility to check your Hong Kong U email account daily and take timely action accordingly. Now, always read the email sent by the Faculty of Science. Always read the email sent by the Faculty of Science, okay? Now, please keep the faculty updated of your contact information, like the telephone address in your student information system account. And finally, hope you all feel ready and eager to seize all the new opportunities that are coming your way and throw yourself into life at Faculty of Science, the University of Hong Kong. And wishing you a very fruitful and memorable experience at the University of Hong Kong, okay? And uh, this is Faculty of Science report from Eddie Lam, okay? Thanks for joining, okay? Thank you, bye-bye, see you. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact the faculty and me as well. Okay, thank you very much.